Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a four-color Legends deck featuring Thalia and the Gidrock monster as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4-mana 4-4 four four with First Strike and Death Touch, letting us play an additional land on each of our turns, and creatures and non-basic lands our opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So it offers a great body as well as plenty of disruption for the opponent, and whenever Thalia and the Gidrock attack, sacrifice a creature or land, and then we get to draw a card. So if we're flooding out, we can replace lands with extra draw steps which can come in handy, and since we get to play an extra land each turn, we won't fall behind on the number of lands in play, which is also very important. Thalia and the Gidrock also have excellent synergy with Adlin, since we can potentially sacrifice the 1-1 one -one human token that we generate with Adlin, which will often attack into opposing blockers anyway, so that way we still get an extra card out of the deal. And then also has a great synergy with Slogurk, the Overslime, which will pick up an extra plus one plus one counter whenever we sacrifice a land, and then once Slogurk leaves the battlefield, even if it doesn't necessarily die, we get to return up to three land cards from our graveyard to our hand, and that also has excellent synergy with the channel lands, which are the main form of interaction in a legendary deck, since we can channel these for often just a single mana, Iganjo dealing four damage, Soaring City bouncing something, we can use Abandoned Mire to get a creature back from the graveyard, and Buseju handles enchantments and non-basic lands, so all these we can also potentially return with Slogurk, while growing it at the same time if we channel them, so more synergy there as well. And then another new addition from March of the Machine is Rona, Herald of Invasion at 2 mana, a 1-3 that says whenever we cast a legendary spell we can untap Rona, which is very useful with its ability to tap and draw a card and then discard a card, so we can get rid of excess legendaries that we maybe already have in play, and then still maybe attack with Rona after casting one of those. And then for 5 and a Phyrexian black mana we can transform Rona into the Tolarian Obliterator, a 5-5 Trampler, saying whenever a source deals damage to Rona, that source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random, and if it's a land card we may put it onto the battlefield, otherwise we may cast it without paying its mana cost. So does a nice Phyrexian Obliterator impression. And then we also have a one of Inga and a Sika, giving our whole team vigilance, and then our creatures can also tap to add one mana of any color that we can only spend to cast creature spells, and whenever we cast a creature spell, if three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it, we also get to draw a card. And then, of course, we are a deck filled with creatures, no non-creature spells, as you can tell, so that's why four copies of Thalia also makes a lot of sense to further disrupt the opponent, and that way we get to play eight Thalias total. And then a Skrelv, another way to protect our key legendaries, or potentially get through a board stall by giving protection from the right color. And then Malira can also protect our key legendaries by sacrificing it. We've got Katilda as another way to let our creatures tap for mana. Can also be a nice mana sink putting plus one counters on the team. And then Denik has all around great synergy with Rafine, which is the main reason to splash a bit of blue alongside Thalia and the Gidrock monster, since we can potentially grow Denik with plus one counters, which shines against the red aggressive decks. We can also potentially discard Denik from our hand to then disturb it for four mana. And once we have the Pious Apparition in play and discard more creatures from our hand, we also get to generate clue tokens for extra card advantage. And then at 3 mana we've got a 1 of Loran to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Also 2 copies of Glissa, Sunslayer, which is very similar to Thal and Nagidrog, has first strike and death touch, so a nightmare for creature decks to block it. And when this one connects we can draw extra cards or maybe destroy an enchantment. And then Rafine is another all-star in this deck, giving us a ton of card selection, another way of getting rid of excess legendaries while growing the team at the same time. And then a mana base uses four copies of Plaza of Heroes to cast all our legendaries on curve. Very important to have in our opening hand to curve out smoothly. Then a two copies of Rafine's Tower as one of the only lands that always enters tapped. And then a few fast lands which are also nice to have in an aggressive deck for mana fixing. Four copies of Razor Verge, two Dark Slick Shores, four Seacrum Coast. And then Shattered Sanctum also makes sense here since we don't really need black mana until turn three. And then the double white's also necessary for Adlin to cast it on curve. That's also the reason why I'm not playing with Shieldred in this deck at four mana. Even though the card is very powerful and has great synergy with Rafine, the double black just wouldn't work with this current mana configuration. And then we also have some channel lands, as we mentioned, for added interaction. And then a two land or waste as another untapped land we can play early. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. 
We'll have to decide how to sequence our lands. Now I guess it's pretty simple. Just go turn one Skrelv, turn two can decide between Danik and Rona, and then turn three have a Glissa. Turn one cut down deals with Skrelv. And a turn to Underdogs, opponent mono black. Between Danik and Rona, I guess Danik trades for Underdog. So that may be better against removal too. Don't expect Glissa to necessarily survive. If our opponent attacks, alright, they stay back. If they did attack, it would have been interesting whether or not to trade, because if we trade, then a Liliana of the Veil becomes kind of tough to deal with. Now, I'll just go with the Mana Efficient Glissa, since our fast lands can be tapped later, and pass it back. And expect our opponent to take out Glissa. So with an untapped land, can maybe play Thali on the Gidrog. Bangbuster is going to be pretty good going late, but Rafine's a nice top deck. So now Danik can attack past Tenacious Underdog. Discarding another Danik in the process, perhaps. Alright, Edict. Okay, goodbye Danik. Play a tap land, and then... Next turn we can decide between double spelling or playing the Gidrog. Although against Mono Black with a lot of basics, it's not going to be at its best. Ooh, Gix's Command deals with Rafine and grows Underdog. So now we're under quite a bit of pressure. I guess Thalia and Gitrog's a better blocker now. Sure. Bangbuster draws. And another Rafine's nice. So we'll play that attack. As opposed to double spelling, I guess getting a Malira down can protect Thali and the Gidrog. Don't really want to sacrifice a land necessarily, so maybe still playing Rafine, discarding another Denik, and then hoping to draw into a land could be better. Because then I'll still be able to play something afterwards. And then I could leave either my Rafine's Tower untapped or Razor Verge Thickets. So I'm more likely to be able to play Melira afterwards after sacking a land. Maybe just keeping the blue mana up is better. That pawn had to cut down. So do I still want to attack here? Maybe better hanging back. Because if I attack, I sack a land and I draw an untapped land, that's great. If I don't, then I'm unable to double spell next turn. And a Dreadfugue can have a look. Probably takes Melira or takes Runa. Always have the option of disturbing Denik. Now Thalia is a decent draw. So we'll play Thalia and attack with Thalia and the Gidrog. Sacrificing, I want to say, Seacrum Coast. And then we'll see what we draw. Adeline could be nice. Play Melira for protection. And then Adlin gives us a token we can sack to the Gidrog monster. So we don't have to sacrifice our lands. Bangbuster gets its last card, makes a pilot. And another Dreadfugue. Fair enough. So goodbye, Adlin. And we'll take five. A land, but it enters tapped, unless I guess I could uh, attack sacking a land and then it enters untapped, but that doesn't really help me cast a four drop. So I may just play Denik and then sacrifice Denik. Or we can keep Thalia and Gidrog back. 
Since, yeah, the damage from Underdog is starting to add up. And then next turn we can Disturb. And then sacking our creatures with a Gidrog is also going to be better if we get a Clue Token in return. Opponent doesn't have any good attacks. Another Thalion Gidrog. Okay, so Disturb. And attack. Opponent takes it, pass it back. Another bank buster. And no attacks. Okay. So now Danik and Thalion the Gidrock can attack, but let me play a Skrull first so I can sack the tapped land. Can play both of my lands out thanks to the Gidrock's ability. So we can main phase sank the clue token in case we draw something useful. Slow Gurk could be nice later. Means sacking a land gets me extra plus one counters. It's our opponent's last chance to use spot removal before the shields go up with Skrelv. Invoke Despair. Okay, do we want to sacrifice Skrelv here? That seems fine. Get a clue, which I can sacrifice right away. Their opponent does still have three mana thanks to the treasure token. And I go for the throat kills Thalia and Gidrog. But Melira can protect it. Finding a replacement. Alright, that works out. Play Slogurk. Attack, sacking a land. And now Soaring City, a nice one mana bounce effect. Bone's gonna jump with the Bank Buster. That's acceptable. So I can play Melira and then be shields down on Soaring City, or I can just uh, keep up Soaring City for one mana. I think playing Melira is still going to be fine here. We've got plenty of blockers for Underdog. Could be that to a Corrupt for 9 damage. Shieldred's fine, can bounce that in our upkeep as well. And a Trespasser can gain one. So now, if we are to bounce Underdog, opponent can still crew Bankbuster in response, so that doesn't really help us, but yeah, just bouncing Shieldra to prevent taking two should be good enough. Slowgurk picks up an extra counter. And an all-out attack should do it. 
Bangbuster can draw, make a pilot, but it will be tapped, and then uh, they cannot cast any removal because of Thalia. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got an interesting opener, definitely a keep. Question is whether to place Krelv on one, or to aim for turn two Malira, turn three Adlin, or maybe Rafine, we'll see. Yeah, I think playing the two drop is going to be better than playing turn one Skrelv. Although there are situations where Skrelv can protect our three drop, whereas Melira doesn't against exile effects, for instance. Blue green, okay. So next turn, Razor Verge into Melira. And then I think I prefer Adlin first if we get a good attack in. Ooh, a Rock Priest, I see. This is a blue green poison deck. And then turn 4 we can double spell Skrelv and a 3-drop. So Melira also pretty good against the poison deck, limiting to one poison counter each turn. So play Adlin. Putin can block the 1-1 one -one token I suppose. But it still seems worth it to attack. And then next turn, Skrelv plus Rafine can discard additional legendaries to the connive ability here. And a march will get another Rock Priest. But yeah, as long as we control Melira, doesn't really matter how many Rock Priests our opponent gets. And get to untap. Katilda's good too. I think I'm still better off going with Skrelv plus Rafine, since I want to be attacking with Adlin. And then maybe go for plus one counters on Melira now. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, Melira doing a number on the poison deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is definitely awkward. Can't really cast anything except for Thalia on turn two. So I'm gonna have to mulligan this one. This is better. And what to get rid of? It's gonna be a land. Wanna keep Plaza. Maybe Abandoned Mire. So we have a bit more mana fixing from the Dark Slick Shores. And also need double white for Adeline. Ooh, nice turn to Thalia is going to be effective against what could be a mono blue Haughty Jin deck. And then I'll keep Skrelv on tap to protect Thalia from a bounce spell. Looks like they're just going to Fading Hope Skrelv now. Fair enough. So next turn our opponent won't be able to counter Adlin because of the tax. Could also go for Glissa. Yeah, close call. Glissa might actually be better since it attacks past Hardy Jin and Tolarian Terror with ease. Even though Adlin applies more pressure. Can double spell Adlin and Skrelv next turn. But it's got another Fading Hope for two mana. Alright. So it did not matter what we played. Now our opponent can potentially counter for three mana. But nope, opponent stuck on two. So, yeah, this is pretty brutal. Opponent unable to maybe cast some of their cantrips. And then now I can even pay for a MIG disappear. Scattery, I guess, works. Don't have four mana. Just play Rona, which we can also transform next turn. Maybe should have attacked with Glissa first to see what we draw. And then I'll keep Skrelv on defense to protect the team. Even though it's unlikely that they have another Fading Hope. Inga and Isika could be fun too. And there's a Terror. 
But the damage has been done. Okay, so if we play Inga and Isika, I can still play Catilda. Rona also quite nice with Inga and Isika. So get in with Glissa. And the our opponent has seen enough. Next turn we get to attack all out. Our team has Vigilance. We can either transform Rona or put counters on the team with Catilda. And that's going to be a lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Skrelv into Malira. Still need black mana for Thalia and Gidrog. But I'm sure we'll find it. And then we'll see if we can hang on to Aiganjo as a cheap removal spell. Up against the red deck. And there's our black mana. Do I attack with Skrelv? Yeah, it might be fine if they take out Melira, so be it. It's gonna be a Felden, which I don't necessarily want to block here. Can block it profitably with Thalia once we play it. Back up Melira. Okay, I Ganjo also an option now, but then I wouldn't necessarily have the mana to play Thalia and the Gitrog. So it's a bit awkward. Might want to keep Miliar back to block the etching. A reckless impulse. Finding a lightning strike and a land. So now taking out Felden might not be a bad idea since they are potentially unable to make use of the card from Felden and the lightning strike. Could also just trade for Melira here, since we have another one, and keep Iganja to make sure we can play Thali and the Gidrog. Couple of lands and a Swiss Spear. Okay, can hang on to Iganjo, even though I'll have to take one damage. It's going to be the case no matter what. And then Skrelvis protecting Thalia. I'm gonna hang on to Aganjo even though I could have played it as my second land. And there's a Swift Spear with a counter. But it enters tapped. And our opponent's gonna have a hard time attacking into our 4 4 first rank Death Touch. So our opponent forced to take out Skrelv. That's fine. Got another one. Adlin's nice too. So now it may be worth it to play Adlin, play Aganjo, play Skrelv. Or we can play Melira. Although, let's see here. When it's put into a graveyard, Etching would exile it, so I don't think Melira is going to be too helpful. And then now if I attack, I can sack the 1 1 token from Adlin, so I don't have to sacrifice a land. Since they would get to block the 1 1 anyway. And play Skrelv. And if our opponent does manage to take out Thali and Gidrog here, we've got a backup anyway. So it's not a disaster. Etching comes into play tapped. Yeah, this ability is pretty handy against Monoret with all their haste creatures. Mechanized Warfare is a good one. So the damage could add up very quickly now. Have to be mindful of end of festivities dealing two to everything. So if I put Adlon in front of Etching, end of festivities could finish it off. If it's just a play with fire, it's not the end of the world. If they have both, it would be a disaster. It's pretty risky, I think I just take it here. And then hope to close out the game in two turns, thanks to Adlin adding a ton of pressure. Alright, Lightning Shrine going face. So that's gonna 
get us all the way down to two. Can I kill my opponents? We have an extra one power on Adlin if I play Melira. So that's four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, not quite. So only Adlin gets to attack at this point, maybe Skrelv as well, since burn spells would just go to my face anyway. And then we have three blockers, but we're dead to a burn spell. Haste creature doesn't do it because of Thalia, so Felden's fine. And then next turn I can activate Skrelv to attack past the opponent's blockers. Opponent passes. And Catilda the draw. Okay, so play Catilda main phase to grow Adlin. If I give Adlin pro red. And attack all out, does that do it? Adlin would grow up to 7 power. And then at least one creature should go through. So that seems good to me. Picked up a land. Putin cannot block Adlin, so they're at a virtual one life, and at least one creature should be connecting here. Alright, Thali and the Gidrog, definitely an MVP here, letting all these haste creatures come into play tapped. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, but uh, one lander we're gonna have to mulligan. This isn't ideal, but I guess we'll keep. And then I'll let go of either a land or a Thalia. Let's get rid of a Thalia and Gidrog. Put in blue black, a backup Skrull is also kind of awkward. Can just play another thicket. And then we can maybe sacrifice Skrelf to Thalia and Gidrog when we attack. Play Melira, protect it with Skrelf as opposed to attacking for one. And at least now Thalia and Gidrog will be well protected. Okay, and Liliana can make a sacrifice Skrelf. Now we get to play an extra land right away. Could be worth it to ignore Liliana and just go face. I think it's safer to just deal with Liliana in case they can kill some of my creatures and then minus two again in the future. Okay, Invasion's gonna discard my last card. But we can start drawing by sacrificing a land here. Ooh, and a Rafim was a great top deck too. So now we might get some plus one counters out of the deal. And we'll load up on Melira. Sack a thicket. And I can hang on to Iganjo to maybe channel it as removal. Gonna be another invasion to make me discard. Fine. And a ledger shredder which enters tapped. Alright, so we have the potential of killing our opponent if we draw into two, two non land cards and discard them. Sacrificing Soaring City. 
finding Buseju. And yeah, there we go. Found another Thalian Gitrog and Denik, which we also could have disturbed here after discarding it. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn to Rona. Can uh, maybe discard a second Adlin before casting it, and then it can still untap to attack and make a 1-1. And our mana should be pretty decent here, thanks to the Tri-Land and Plaza. Up against a red deck. Ooh, Thalia's quite effective in this matchup. Might be worth playing over Harona. Glissa can also take out enchantments. Opponent's got a 3 3 adversary. Kind of wanted to attack so we can uh, get in with Adlin and make a token. And 4 toughness is a bit harder for the opponent to take out than 3 toughness on Glissa. But we can play that next turn. If our opponent attacks into Adlin, I'm probably okay blocking since we have a backup. Ooh, end of festivities, pretty effective here, killing our token Anthalia. Can still block a two-part creature. Okay, so I cannot double spell, so I'm just gonna play Glissa pre combat to get an extra power on Adlin. So yeah, we might still be okay here. Opponent had the lightning strike for Glissa. But still have a two-powered Adlin to hold off etching. Another end of festivities, all right. I guess now we're back to a similar situation to last turn. Take six down to three. So I want to get my lifelinker in play as soon as possible. And then I'm unable to play Rona here since we only have blue and white on two of our lands. Well, still want a lifelinker, I think. Throw that to another lightning strike, but we should be able to beat a lot of other cards. Kumano down to two. No attacks. Okay, so now... I could send Denik to his demise just to gain two life. That doesn't seem all that amazing. I guess I could use Plaza to make it indestructible. Otherwise we're at the mercy of the opponent's top decks in case they find a burn spell. And then just play Rona for now, attack with Adlin or attack first. And then if they trade I can play another Adlin second main. And then the token should probably stay back even though they can eat a 1-1 for free here. They would also be able to eat two of them for free. So if they double block Adlin, I'll happily take out an adversary and play another Adlin. But it's gonna take it. In which case we'll play Runa. Which can also threaten to transform, although not if we have to pay two life for it, of course. Alright, now I'm dead to a lot more cards than last turn. Their opponent passes, and Rafine was the perfect top deck. So now we can start putting counters on Danik. Probably should have looted first, but we can still do it now. Want to keep the actual creatures in hand, so we can uh, grow with Connive. And I think everyone can attack now to get the most counters on Danik. That looks good. Can channel Boseju, potentially blowing up Kumano before blockers, but our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so we get to see our four-color Legends deck in action, 
and the deck seems pretty real. It's got game against the aggressive decks like mono reds, mono white, mono blue, but it also can outgrind some of the more mid rangey and control decks thanks to all the card advantage between the clue tokens from Danik, the extra draw from Rafine's Connive, and then just drawing some cards with the Gitrog monster can also come in handy, especially once you start flooding out a little bit. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with how this one turned out. That's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.